Hello everyone, Mr. Science Mover here. Now that Multiversus is back from its long hiatus, I've been having a lot of fun with the game again. I ended up picking up a new character in Black Adam, specifically Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Tell them the men in black sent you. And they even added some new characters. Marvin the Martian, who I saw coming a year ago, Jason Voorhees and Banana Guard, who are both way out from left field, and the Joker. On top of those though, they've also announced that they're going to be adding Agent Smith from The Matrix in a few months. But you can unlock him early and get him for free on release if you complete his specific missions, which are to defeat Rift bosses. If you're jumping into multiverses for the first time, or it's your first time back from the beta a year ago, there's a new game mode you'll need to learn about in order to complete this lofty challenge. The Rifts are a new PvE game mode where you and hopefully a friend will complete a series of challenges in a few different storylines. Each storyline, or rift, is comprised of nodes, and each node itself is a single challenge with five obtainable goals. Usually these challenges are simply to defeat an opponent, but it can vary. Other noteworthy challenges are break the targets and collect a reward. Also, it's worth noting that for each challenge, the first goal will always be a simple completion, and the last goal is to play with a friend, so you're going to want to play with somebody to get that last star on every node. Fortunately, I've been playing this mode for a few hours and I have some strategies cooked up, so if you're new, here's my recommendations as to where you should start. First off, the Agent Smith progression track can only be accomplished by completing boss nodes. The boss node is, unfortunately and expectedly, at the very end of the rift, only completable once you've completed all other nodes in the rift, and can only yield one tier at most. In order to unlock Agent Smith as a character, you'll need to finish 20 tiers, which means 20 different boss completions. You might notice hopping in that there are only 5 rifts currently available, and while that's true, we can fortunately take advantage of the different difficulties. Each rift has 3 currently available difficulties, giving us a total of 15 bosses available right now for us to defeat. And at the very bottom, the most difficult boss will unlock for every rift on July 10th, giving us an extra 5 more bosses to make the 20 that we need. There will definitely be more rifts in the future though, as the Agent Smith questline goes up to 30 tiers, but presumably if you want the special Agent Smith skin, you'll have to complete all of these at some point. The first thing I want to mention is that your gems are extremely important. I know when I first started playing rifts, I neglected them because I thought they were the same as perks in PvP, but if you actually look at them, they're way more broken. One single gem will give you plus 100% attack or plus 100 defense per gem level. So you absolutely need these, especially on the higher difficulties. You may be tempted to jump right into the second difficulty of Rift right from the get-go, but having done that myself, I'll recommend against doing that. The reason is that some of the goals you need to complete within a node are based on doing a certain number of moves, for example doing 10 upward moves. Not only does skipping the first difficulty mean you're going to have a harder time in the second difficulty, but it means that after completing that difficulty and going back to the first, You'll actually be so strong that it's a challenge to just complete the goals before your opponent dies, and you'll have to intentionally unequip gems. So if you're planning on completing all difficulties, start at the lowest one to get the maximum mileage out of your gems and your time. And to be honest, you should probably complete all rifts on the lowest difficulty first before moving up to the second difficulty on any of them. The gems transfer between both rifts and difficulties, so leveling up your digital gems by completing all the Joker rift difficulties might make it harder for you to complete the easy level of the Summer Rift. Like I said, no harm no foul if you need to unequip gems to make yourself weaker, but it'll just take you a bit longer. Now getting into the actual fights, make sure to pay attention to the goals you're doing for each node to minimize the number of times you have to beat the node. Like I said, goals 1 and 5 are accomplished simply by beating the node with a friend, but the other goals are much more intentional than that. If the goal says to do some specific moves, make sure you do them the first time around or else you'll have to go back through. Also, if you are playing with a friend, make sure both of you know the goals ahead of time because you'll have to do them independently. If the goal says to pick a specific character type, be aware of what type of character you're choosing. That sounds stupid to say out loud, but when you actually look at the types of not just the characters but skins of characters, you'll see that some attributes change across character skins. For example, the comic book Black Adam is villainous, but the movie Black Adam is heroic. Also, the default Black Adam is caped, but the comic book Black Adam does not have a cape, and thus is not caped. This can come in handy, but it can also bite you in the butt. It means I can play movie Black Adam if the node asks for a hero, but it also means that I can't play Shagworthy if the node asks for a detective. So just be very aware of the specific character you're playing, and not just the moveset, but the skin as well, because skins technically change what quote unquote character you're playing. Also this goes without saying, but try to find overlaps wherever possible. 
A node that asks for a human and also asks for a character from Adventure Time can be done in two plays with Jake and Harley Quinn, but could also be done in one play with Finn. So small things like that will save you time overall, especially because you'll be playing each node four times, once on each difficulty. In terms of strategies for actual battles, i found that the CPUs and Rifts absolutely hate the air dodge. I don't know why, but you can pretty much just up smash and up air to your heart's desire, and they'll just fall into it. Pretty much, if you land one, they die as long as you don't mess up. I haven't tested every character, but I know this works for Black Adam, Jake, Jason, Superman, and Shaggy. So it's likely it'll work with whatever character you choose. If you're not playing with a friend, make sure that on double battles your teammate doesn't get in the way. I've had a lot of trouble with Banana Guard killing my opponents before I could land 10 down moves, so just be aware. Another reason to coordinate with a human player. On the break the target stages, I like to play Black Adam because his up special is literally just flying which makes the whole thing pretty much trivial. Steven Universe is also pretty good for this since he can create platforms and reach up pretty high, but he doesn't have nearly as much control. Also, Black Adam has the added benefit of being extremely good in the treasure hunt levels, where you beat up on Banana Guard. Most characters' up moves will send the opponent up, but Black Adam's actually sends the opponent down due to the secondary lightning strike hitbox. So you can very easily chain together up tilt after up tilt to stunlock the Banana Guard and just grind him out in place for all the money you need. And if he does get out, your side special is pretty good for horizontal mobility so you can get right back to it. After all is said and done, each difficulty of a rift will have exactly enough goals to gain all the gem upgrades without a partner, with a huge caveat, which is that some of the nodes require specific characters or skins. In order to avoid having to buy a Superman with a Batman graphic tee, you'll need to play with a friend. Also right now there are only 5 rifts, 2 digital, 2 chaos, and 1 horror which means that the horror gems will be harder to level up, and the extra difficulties for the Jason Rift will be more difficult to unlock. So if your friend has a limited amount of time to play with you, start here. Last but certainly not least, if you're trying to complete all of these rifts with a friend, you can actually save some time by overlapping your progression. So long as a player has unlocked a difficulty, the game will allow that player to queue into any node within that difficulty. So rather than you and your friend playing through all the hardest difficulties together, you can play the Joker Rift, they play the Summer Rift, and then you queue into each other's final boss fights to get credit for the Agent Smith tier. This would effectively reduce an entire difficulty's worth of nodes into a single boss fight. Unfortunately, it's not possible to completely carry someone through getting Agent Smith, as they still need to level up their gems to unlock the higher difficulties. But we take what we can get. It also means if your friend is a little busy, they can complete the first three difficulties with you and just come back later to do all the final bosses. Talk it out, but save y'all some time. Anyway, that's everything you need to know, and feel free to leave comments about strategies you've found or other ways to speed up the process. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.